Hey YouTubers and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super discussion video. I am once again joined by the other half of the dynamic duo, MJ over MJMTV. MJMGTV. <laughs> uh, guys, why don't you say hello to him? MJ, why don't you say hello to everyone listening? Hello. Hello. <laughs> anyway guys, so today you guys saw the title, you saw the thumbnail. We're going to be talking about whether or not they should have other people in the tournament of power stadium ring watching the tournament of power go on or do something similar to what universe 2 did and have people watching it on some kind of god tube type of streaming service or something else like that because honestly man i think it's weird and i did a video about this before the tournament of power even began i believe it was with kevin or the golden scouter about how Granted, it has been a very long time, a couple months now, but before all this began about how they seemingly were writing Bulma and everyone out of the Tournament of Power. You know, like, uh, she was pregnant at the time with Brawl. We didn't know at that time whether she was actually going to give birth at that uh, that specific moment or how it was going to happen. Obviously, <laughs> it, it happened in a very unique way, but... It really felt like, yeah, they, they were just tr trying their best to get all these people who were just kind of cannon fodder or weren't going to be very important to the fighting aspect of the se season or arc out of the way in order to just focus entirely on that idea. And yes, we got Goku and Vegeta and Frieza and Piccolo and Gohan at 18 and 17 and Krillin and Tenshinhan and Masaroshi and all of them really fighting and it's been really awesome at this point. But wouldn't it have been good on GodTube, or maybe even in the stands themselves, to have Bulma, Goten, Trunks, Marin, Chi Chi, Ox King, and everyone else that we can think of, uh, Chao Tzu, everyone. Really, they're fighting for the existence of the universe, and most people don't even know about it. Do you think that that's kind of, I guess, downgrading the characters that we've come to know and love from Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z in any real way? Or do you think that this was a necessary step in the arc in order to focus most of their time on fighting? What are your thoughts? It's a bit weird. Like, I would say, yeah, but then again, other tournaments have had a lot of fighting, you know? So it's like, but then again, I guess this ain't a regular tournament. But anyways, I feel like they should have at least had them watching the tournament, like on GodTube or something, because it seemed like... You know, they did it with Universe 2. <laughs> Everyone at Universe 2, presumably every planet has some sort of streaming service set up and they're watching this moment of power. <laughs> so with that being said, I can't believe they didn't do that with other universes. Remember, me did a video a while back talking about the idea how it would be cool for Yamcha, Bulma, Trunks, and Goten, or Trunks and Goten to eventually make their way with Mirren to the lookout. And, like, they all watch the tournament with, like, with Kibito. You know, Kibito shows up with, like, the, the ball or, like, a little god tube thing, you know, and they all watch it together. I think that would have been cool, you know, for them to do something like that. But they obviously didn't do it. They did it with Universe 2, but not with Universe 7, which is weird. Because, like I said, Universe 7 is kind of like our universe, the main universe. But whatever, you know. I think that would have been fine. It also would have been cool to see them there. But knowing... The, like, even though I understand the gods are there, you know, like Grand Prix and know they kind of monitor stuff, the tournament has been kind of crazy, you know, you've had people try to kill people from the outside <laughs> on the bench, like Frost, you've had, uh, you know, Jiren flexing his muscles and, like, shaking the entire world of void. <laughs> so it's like, I can kind of understand why maybe it fits in the story to not to bring Bulma and a newborn baby, <laughs> you know, to the tournament stage, and, like, you know, Pan and, you know, Vid and, and Videl, I can honestly see why they wouldn't do that, even though I understand, like I said, the gods are monitoring stuff, it still is kind of hectic, like a very hectic situation. So I can see why, but still, the god tube, it just makes so much sense. And again, they did it with Universe 2. Why not with, their, why not with the, all the other universes, you know? It's like, you would think, I don't know. I, there's, still, there's still a part of me that believes that they're going to do that. I would really like to see, and you and I have talked about this before in other videos, but just to kind of reiterate, I would really like to see them take one episode... I know a lot of people might not like this, but just me in my own fan-centric way would love to see just a couple minutes in one episode, maybe just even half of the episode, the way that these episodes are uh, split up, have Goten and Trunks, Marin resolve that issue very quickly with the poachers who are coming in on them the very last time we yeah. saw all of that because that seemingly set up something, you know? Like, and, and I know it's only 48 minutes and if 
the Universe 2 live stream is anything to go off of. It, is, it actually is happening in real time, and the world of Void isn't so much devoid of time and space as they once said it was. It's really just kind of a uh, a cluster fluck <laughs> of of uh, things that could potentially derail that that sense that that situation. But I would like to see them take at least half of one episode one time. They don't even have to spoil it for us. This would be great, wouldn't it? Uh, you have a a preview a preview showing us just regular fighting. It doesn't look like a whole lot's going on. It might be Goku and uh, Goku and Jiren or Vegeta and Jiren, Gohan and Jiren, whoever you know, something. And then the episode begins, and the very first half of the episode is literally Goten, Trunks, and Marin figuring out that stuff and heading to the lookout and and Bulma and everyone else are because of whatever happened heading out to look out and watching it on God, God tube with the with some kind of a, a an orb the same thing that uh Elder Kai is using in some regard throughout the entire series watching this on the screen I I really personally think you know with how much is on stake within this personal tournament with how much Vegeta has put on himself wishing back universe six or wishing back all the other universes depending on how you look at his wordings uh in particular we need bulma we need trunks we need goten and marin and everyone else to root on for their parents especially if they're not going to take out 17 and 18 so soon it would be great to see marin rooting on her mom and goten rooting on gohan and and goku or something getting this idea of like what they're fighting for because for whatever reason dente and popo know about what's going on it, like that that to me needs to happen because they haven't and they've really taken a stance that they didn't want these people in the stands even though for the most part if you go back in dragon ball and dragon ball z and even dragon ball gt for gosh sake uh dragon ball super even in the first tournament of this series you see these people in the stands having commentary they literally have something to say in every single fight that's going on in this entire series and not this one with how much is at stake i think it's just it's a super flaw with Dragon Ball Super, you know, not to make a pun, but it really is. And I want them to bring these people back in. And I know the tragic, tragic loss of the voice actress who play, played uh, Bulma. It, like, literally, seriously, it, it's just, I know it might be a little too soon to bring her in. And if they had any plans, maybe they're really reshuffling and they're not going to do that because of this or something else like that. But seriously... I would like to see all of them. I think it's important to see all of them, especially with that, what's at stake. What are your thoughts? No, I would I would love that. I mean, yeah. I mean, Hiromi Sudu, I mean, rest in peace. I never did a video on paying tribute to her and the character of Bulma, but I'm glad you brought that up. Bringing Bulma back now, obviously, I don't think they would be this far ahead and have recorded lines of Sudu. I think it's a, I'm not sure if it's been confirmed, but I think it's kind of been just a general assumption under the fans that Hiromi Sudu's last lines are going to be for Dragon Ball Fighters, the storyline. So I don't know if they've already recorded anything for Super. Probably not. I don't think they would do a video that far ahead, at least, you know, because, you know, with the animation stuff. But anyways, moving forward, I think that if they were to introduce that, it could be a very heart, heart, heart moment. You know what I mean? Just, I could just imagine, um, Trunks and Goten and Marin finishing up that poetry stuff, and you just see Kabito like teleport there because he does know the teleportation. So you see him teleport there, and he's like, "Hey, do you want to come see your, uh, you know, father, you know, your father's fight, right?" And like we're gaining, we're getting up to like the last five minutes of the tournament, and they're like, "Okay." So you know, they take Marin. He takes Marin, Goten, and Trunks with them. They go to the lookout, and Dende, Popo, Bulma, Oolong, Puar, Yamcha. You know what I mean? Maybe even the Ox King. And, and, and maybe even like Chi-Chi and you have like everybody Pam Videl just there and they're all watching you know they're all watching the stream <laughs> it's not so funny <laughs> they're watching the live stream <laughs> of the tournament on GodTube and they're all just doing their thing watching it and I, I could just imagine how crazy it would be for like once the tournament ends and Goku and because we know they're gonna survive so either either they're gonna be straight up beat Universe 11 and just move on or uh somehow some way you know Universe 11 wins, I guess, and Jiren wishes them back. I don't know what they're going to do. But we know Universe 7 survives because of NSZ. So 
it would be crazy, Mark. Can you just imagine when they all come back to the lookout? Like, I know Maria, Miss DVZ, babe. I, I think everybody, not just her, would freak out just to see, you know, Vegeta, as soon as he lands, just run towards Bulma and Brawl. Like, and then that, the I was behind that, you know, him running towards Bulma, you know, for what we know out of the universe. It's like, that would just be a heart, heartwarming moment, you know? But Bulma, Bulma with Brawl and Trunks at her side. And running towards him, complete opposite of what we saw in the blue arc. Blue arc, when he comes back and they run towards him and embrace yeah. him, that would be that would be so amazing. I I I, I, can, I cannot stress how much them showing up, literally at the you know they left this this at the the uh, capsule corp. I cannot stress how much. It would be awesome to see them come back on Kami's lookout and see a a complete reverse of the Boo arc where Vegeta literally embraces his family instead of them embracing him. Uh, I, I I personally would love to see that. And the same thing with uh, Goku or Gohan and Videl with Pan and Goku with Chi Chi and Goten and everything else like that. Like, I, it's just. It really feels to me, you know, based off of watching Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super even, Dragon Ball Super, even with the first tournament in this series, it feels like they dropped the ball. Like, I know the super uh, the, the tournament of power has been really awesome. I really like it. It's great to see the gods of destruction interacting with each other, uh, getting to see the warriors interacting with each other, maybe having Bulma and Goten and, Cho- and, and Trunks and chi chi and ox king and everyone else who's always there and all the other tournaments <laughs> uh interacting with each other would have been a little too much to juggle i completely understand that especially with the voice actors you don't want to spend too much money but seriously they should know about this tournament they should be watching this tournament in one way shape or form throughout its entirety or at least the last 10 minutes or something so they know the severity of the situation and they know what these people are fighting for and you add that extra amount of stakes to the situation where goku and vegeta and gohan or frieza or anything else is fighting for one thing especially if all these people are literally sitting there at the very end of the day rooting for frieza <laughs> to, to to save the universe i mean there's just so much potential there considering all the all the history with everyone involved and i just to me it, it it might be like honestly this might just be the biggest waste of the tournament of power i know a lot of people have opinions with the battle royale situation you and i've talked about that before uh might have situations with universe 7 taking out all the other universes literally every single universe uh but this one to me is always going to ring true as the biggest problem with this tournament of power. it's such a small little detail but it's like i think they need it because for one i'm just getting sick and tired of looking at the at the world of boy like it would be cool just to cut back you know what i mean to like universe 7 and earth and cut back to the lookout and cut back to everyone there you know what i mean yeah, i think it would just be nice to kind of just get out of the world of boy even if it is for just a split second <laughs> you know because i'm just really getting tired of that scenery the same scenery for the last 30 episodes you know but anyways and plus, you use Kabito as kind of like that. Uh, he's, I guess, basically the arc, if you will. You know what I mean? He comes and he's the reason why he says, hey, you know, you want to come see the final fight? You know, it's your dad, you know, versus so-and-so. <laughs> you know, do you want to? It makes sense because he's probably watching it. He has probably access to the, you know, the spirit, you know, the, uh, what is it called? The fortune teller type ball, you know? <laughs> he has access to that, mm-hmm. so he's probably able to watch it. He is a Kyoshin assistant, so it would make sense to bring him in. That's the reason why he brings everyone to look out. That is God's temple, basically. It just makes perfect sense, and plus, this is something that happened in the Future Trunks arc, and it was such a very small scene. I'm talking a split-second scene. You would really have to go back and find it in, in the episode to look for. I would have to tell you, like, the minute mark, because it's so small. Very small scene of Yajirobe. But it, it echoed like so much to me. And it was episode 65, I believe. And the reason why it echoed with me is because Yajirobe, even though this is future, you know, timeline Yajirobe, he says to he says to himself, son, I know you're facing, uh, you know, the, I know you're facing a great evil, but you've always come through for us. Please win this. And I did in my review. I'm not sure if I did a review or if I did a discussion on it. I pointed out that is such a small line. 
but it just echoes throughout me because Yajirobe is one of those characters that's been there since Dragon Ball. And forget God's destruction, forget Vegeta, no offense, forget, you know, Trunks in his rage form, forget all this stuff. When it comes down to it, Goku was the one saving the day. Goku was the one coming in and fighting. Goku, even though it, people argue he was definitely saving the day, he was just fighting for himself. That's fine. He was still fighting the greater evil. And that just, it echoed through me because it just brought back so many memories of that happening during, you know, the Piccolo Daimao fight, the Piccolo Jr. fight. Obviously, the sign arc because Yajirobe was there. So it's like, it just, it felt so good cool and it felt so awesome for a second i was like yeah goku you are my hero you know what i mean keep fighting that even though it makes no sense for him to fight merge Masu by himself it felt it just felt like dragon ball it felt cool so imagine this everyone's on the lookout and again forget gods of destruction forget every this forget all of this imagine they do a quick little scene with yamcha it could be a split second just like the ajirobe one but just imagine yamcha thinking back and we take a reanimated scene of Goku, like uh, him and Goku, like clashing fist to fist in Dragon Ball. And then he he utters like the line, like, come on, son, I know, you know, you can I know you can do this. You've always won. You know what I mean? Even though that may not reign true, technically, in Yamcha's mind, Goku's always been the best, you know. So it would just be cool. And it's a heartwarming moment to kind of go back to DB for a moment to when Goku was technically the best to Yamcha. You know what I mean? He was their guy. He was their ace. You know what I mean? If I can't beat, uh, if I can't beat bandages, you will. If I can't beat Chun, you have a chance. If I can't beat TN, then you have a chance. If I can't fight Piccolo and his army, you have the chance. There's something special about that. So when you have characters like this who've been there since Dragon Ball, Bulma, Yamcha, Oolong, Having them watch it, I think it just makes this tournament all the more special. You know, I completely agree with that. and I, I It kind of reminds me of something that we saw, at least I believe, I could be completely misremembering this from one, one reason or another, but Dragon Ball Z had a similar moment with, with Bulma, and you could play off the same thing. You could even play off the same dialogue, so you can take it and, you know, <laughs> remaster it so it sounds really crisp and clear so it's like the same exact thing but uh you know Bulma sitting there going like you know Goku you've always you've always come through you like you always win like and uh, it's just you know for, for for what's all happened in the the community and everything in the last couple weeks it's like I know it would be great to hear that from Yam Yajirobe, someone who's been there from the very beginning, but more so with Bulma sitting there along with Trunks and Goten and Chi-Chi and Ox King and Fidel and Pan and like it bra and everyone else just having Bulma sit there at the end of the universe for the most part and just say, you know, you can do it. You, you like, you know, you've always been there from the very beginning. You've always been there and you always sit there and and help us or so you know you always win i don't gotta get a bit I, emotional here bro <laughs> i mean <too. laughs> i'm trying, I'm trying oh, to hold back man. some tears right now like like i was like no seriously it's like to me like that is what the turn of power needs it really really does because you know, you could sit there and say, like, oh, Goku's had good fights. Vegeta's had good fights. Frieza's been the MVP of the Tournament of Power. We've said all of this, but it really makes no difference. Really, honestly, it makes no huge difference if we're not seeing the impact it's having on the people who are powerless to stop it, who are literally just audience members of what is going on. And you can make the idea, you could make the... Uh, uh, you can make the connection between Beerus and Whis and Shampa and Vados and Quitella and Margarita and Vermouth and all these other people I'm forgetting the names of as being helpless members of the Terminator of Power who don't have any say in what goes on ever. But that is something... And, and you know, there's some poeticness to that because that's the thing for the most part of the most fandom, I'm sure either English or Japanese sits there and says one way or the other that, 
you know, Dragon Ball Super has been built on this high god, uh, god hierarchy, and Beerus and Champa or Vados and Whis could always step in in any given situation and fix the problem. But this is something that they can't really step into. They can't do anything about, and they just kind of have to accept the fact. So Champa can be disappeared. Quetella can be disappeared. Like all the other gods of destruction who can t uh, get completely erased can be disappeared, and that's fine. Uh, they can't do anything about it. It's up to the people who are fighting in the term of power. But to me, you know, if you have 30 years of things to go off of, what you really need to be focusing on is Bulma. You need to be focusing on Bulma considering her relationship with Goku and Vegeta. You have to be focusing on Videl considering Pan was just born, Brawl was just born, Chi Chi, considering her relationship with Goku and Ox King, because he's been there so long, uh, Yamcha, despite uh, the sadness of Yamcha for the most part, he's been there forever. It would be fantastic to focus on these particular characters and see how they're interacting or they're, they're pushing forward with the knowledge that if these guys don't win, the guys that we've looked for up to that we've you know kind of uh put our whole stock into our entire lives whether it's on namek or earth or anything else they're gonna lose if they lose we're done like no one's gonna bring us back at this point because they'd be introduced so late in the tournament of power they don't know that Jiren and Topo, they would see Jiren as, uh, as 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 a complete bad guy. They don't know that these guys are for justice or anything else like that. They made that point clear. These guys are gonna erase them mm -hmm. if they and if they lose Universe Eleven. They lose. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah like it, it's heartbreaking, and they can't do anything about it. And they put it, they put these characters that we've known from the very beginning of Dragon Ball in in like in the seat. And we're all with them right there. Like, if they lose, we lose. Like, we don't know. We can't do anything about it. Yeah, but that, that's my point, though. Right? <laughs> and, to off, it's like, that's my point. Even, don't get me wrong. I love the he's coming part with, that sounded so wrong. I, I love the he's coming <laughs> part with Beerus because that plays up so much on what on the relationship between Beerus and Goku and what Beerus thought of Goku in BOG to what he thinks of him now. That's amazing. But I think with that moment, that's as best as you can get because that's all their relationship goes back to is BOG. They've only known each other for a few years. And yeah, they have access to GodTube and they can watch as much as they want, but they weren't there. They didn't live those situations. They didn't live Planet Namek shaking and Bulma running for her life and go on screaming for his dad and Frieza killing everybody, you know? They didn't live through the Saiyan arc with Vegeta trying to kill everybody. They didn't live through Majin Buu turning them all into candy and eating them. So the point here is that, yeah, you can get technical with it and you can complain all you want but goku's always been the guy whether he was stronger or not to go up against that greater evil and like you and even though jiren and, and, and topo aren't evil they're still looked at as being evil by people like to uh, by bulma and yamcha and and yajirobe and karin and dinde and popo so it's like to have them reacting to that people who have known goku all his life and people who have been there through those battles and through those dire situations it makes it a bit better, you know what I mean? I think it just adds more of that feel to it, you know what I mean? I think they've kind of capitalized on what they could with Beerus during the special, capitalized on the lifelong uh, friendships that Goku's had at the end, you know, the rematch. I think that would be cool. No, I completely agree. Uh, not to make this a video like 30 minutes. Like no, they, they love this, bro. There, but, uh, <laughs> they love this. Uh, I, I, hope you guys, I hope you guys have really enjoyed this. I've, I've actually... Didn't think it would actually be this long, but it really did get kind of emotional there for the most <laughs> most part. Like you know, uh, and 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 this is this is from the heart, really. You know, MJ and I talk about this show every day, if not with each other, with other people or with you guys. Uh, and this is something we want as fans. Uh, I think it's something that we really need to really showcase the gravity of the situation, especially when. It's very possible, considering the strength of Jiren, that Universe 7 could get erased, at least momentarily. Yeah, uh, momentarily. <laughs> uh, and, and momentarily, for like, obviously not for the, the, the future of Dragon Ball Super, but you know, for momentarily, it's something we need. And it's something we need to 
prop up the idea that this is possible and we, we really need to be fearing it, especially when you have Universe 7 taking out the majority of every universe participating. In fact, every single universe that's participating, they've, they've eliminated individually. Uh, probably not every single member, but most members. And uh, yeah, I, I felt like this is probably the best thing that we need right now. Like uh, Bulma and Chi Chi and Goten and Trunks and Ox King and Yamcha and Chaozu and uh, and Dende and Popo and you know, like every every all the all the usual suspects. So I hope you guys have really appreciated this discussion. I hope you sympathize with the way that we look at this and the way we've looked at the majority of the Dragon Ball continuity, be it Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, or Dragon Ball Super, every tournament arc that we've seen thus far, uh, despite, you know, tragic, tragic uh, real-life losses that we've had. I think it's important that, uh, story-wise, that Toei looks beyond those even just to kind of you know, play that up, but it's obviously that they're not going to do that. Anyway, with that being said, I hope everyone goes down to the description section below and hits that link to go subscribe to MJ. Uh, guy makes some really awesome Dragon Ball Super content, stuff that you're not going to want to miss. At the same time, I hope everyone likes, comments, and definitely subscribes. Hits that bell over by the subscriber button. Don't forget to, uh, like I said, just share your thoughts and opinions about this in the comment section below. Hit that bell over by the subscriber button. That's going to notify you every single time I upload. But with that being said, guys, I hope everyone has a fantastic day. It's been real.